WZDX presents an extra look at the hottest action from the world of sports. This is WZDX Sports Extra with Mo Carter, Charity Chambers, and Kayla Carlisle. Welcome back to another edition of Sports Extra, the only sports show where all three anchors have the last name that starts with a C. <laughs> We've got another one good for you coming up tonight right here on WZDX. That's right. Football season is in full effect, so of course we have plenty of highlights coming your way. I'm Kayla Carlisle alongside Charity Chambers and Sports Director Mo Carter with a C. Yes. Well, let's get right to it, guys. Here's a look at what we have on tap tonight. We're going to take you out on the hill where an old rivalry was renewed between Alabama a and and UNA full highlights and a recap from that intense matchup. The Crimson Tide and the Auburn Tigers both showed out in their home openers. We'll discuss how things are shaping up for them as well as the college football scene as a whole. And it's the first week of the NFL regular season. The Titans travel down to South Beach to take on the Dolphins. We've got those highlights and of course we've got our best of the week. Well, first, we're going to kick things off with a big story over the weekend here in Huntsville. Alabama a &M facing off against the UNA Lions for their first time in over two decades. And I'll just say, get your popcorn ready, guys, because it was a good one. Bulldogs and Lions shaking hands before the game first quarter. Lions with the ball. Christian Lopez with the play action fake. He throws it up to Jacoby Bird. He's going to find the end zone. Two point conversion was good, putting them up. Eight to zip. But the Bulldogs have an answer. 11 play drive would be capped off with this. Kill Glass. Throws it up to Gerard Jones in the flats for the touchdown score now 8 to 7. Second quarter, Lions are in the red zone again, and this time Lopez calling his own number for the touchdown. Lions go up now 15 to 7. But Akil Glass wouldn't be outdone. He leads the Bulldogs back down the field. Watch this. He's going to hit Isaiah Bailey on a short touchdown pass. Nice grab there, putting the Bulldogs within one. Late in the second, Lions up 18 to 14. Rhett files in for UNA at quarterback now. Watch this. His pass is tipped and intercepted by Armani Holloway. Look at him go. He's trucking it, running over people. He would eventually be brought down, and that would lead to a 25-yard field goal by Spencer Corey, 18-17 to at the half. We're going to go ahead and go on to the second half now. Alabama A&M's drive stalls at the UNA one-yard line, so the Bulldogs kick a field goal. That's Spencer Corey again. They take a 20-18 to lead in the fourth. Same score in the fourth lines with the ball. Kill Glass, sacked by Maurice Burton Jr. and he fumbles the ball. It's recovered by Brady Owensby. Lions take over. This was a really huge momentum shift for the Lions. UNA would go on to cash in as Christian Lopez. He finds Jacoby Bird across the middle. Nice grab right there on a 30-yard touchdown, putting UNA up 25 to 20. They would stop a &M late twice and win the ball game. Final scores of that game, North Alabama 28. Alabama a and 20, great game there. And Mo, you were actually out there at the game. In your opinion, what were some of the biggest takeaways from that major game last night? Well, Jeremy, because these teams are so similar in all three phases, I thought that it would be a close contest and that the smallest things would make a difference in this big time battle. UNA jumped out to an early lead and held it throughout the first half, but Alabama A&M never was out of it as they matched the Lions blow for blow. Once again, it's just another week for us, it seems like, of uh, just coming down to the wire. Last week, I offensively had to stand up and, and get it done, and this week, the defense didn't. gave up. Uh, you lead for first and, uh, and was driving right down the field, looked like we weren't going to be able to stop them. Uh, we made some adjustments and we were able to slow them down, got back in the ball game. Our guys never quit. And because the Bulldogs never quit, they would stand tall and eventually take the lead in the second half with a Spencer Corey field goal. Alabama a and was in position to put the game away with the lead, but then UNA's defense stepped up with a pair of turnovers. First, they stripped Akil Glass on the sack, and eventually that led to the go-ahead score. And we just got beat on the play, and, and quarterback got hit from behind and fumbled it, and then they took it in. That sudden change, we got to learn from that. When sudden change comes, we got to come up, now we got to blow our backs. And then late in the ball game, the Lions defense came up with an interception of glass to seal the game and get the victory. We challenged them at halftime and uh, they stepped up. That's, you know, that's what's the beauty of the game of football. Everybody's got to have each other's backs, whether it's special teams or offense, defense. And tonight, defense stepped up in the second half. UNA would leave Lewis Cruz Stadium with a hard for 25 to 20 victory. And after the game, both coaches said they were proud of their teams and want to see the rivalry continue after the year 2019. They were first class to us tonight. I thought coaching them uh, were first class and, you know, everything was just, you know, play between the lines. I know a couple times it got, you know, a lot of talk and chatter going on, but at the end of the night, uh, everybody just played between the lines. I thought it was just good football. Yeah, I think it's long overdue. As you can see, it was a nice crowd. 
on both sides and uh, and uh, I, I, I don't know why they stopped it, but I think that um, probably here on out we'll probably continue to play it if, if both schedules can get it in. I think it'd be great, a great rivalry to get back going. And ladies, as you see, both coaches very proud of their teams. And I could say, like, if I put myself in the fan mode yesterday, it was a great spectacular game. Back and forth, thrill of victory for one, agony of defeat for the other. But at the same time, I think both teams will be able to use this game as a confidence booster moving forward. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And kind of like you mentioned in the package, I feel like defense was kind of key in that game. You Absolutely. Know, don't on you feel like sides. it on both sides? Like I feel like they did a great job. You know, I know a lot of talk in AM's presser last Monday, they were talking about stopping Christian Lopez, and they did a pretty good job. I mean, he only had, I believe, 146 passing yards, which is pretty amazing compared to the compared week before. To the you know, yeah, <laughs> exactly. You know, before. so I think both sides on both sides of the ball, really great way to kind of renew the rivalry. I feel Absolutely. Like. Yeah. Of course, these two teams will play each other at Brawley Stadium next year, and they're hoping that. Following the 2019 season, they'll have an extended rivalry to like look at on the calendar. Of course, we I'm, know. I'm enjoying that rivalry. Exactly, and I mean, and you should. I mean, these two teams are only separated by about 75 miles, 80 yeah. at the most, and the crowds were great. About 15,000 on hand. Good showing for both Alabama and m and UNA last night. I'm sure that the ticket office probably was enjoying <laughs> what they you know, probably had to turn into not? the bank coming up on tomorrow as well. Right. I know, exactly. and with both with new coaches this year, uh, this year right? I yeah, mean, exactly. they both were showing out a lot yesterday and I was really impressed with both teams and I I'm really excited to see that move on going in the future exactly yeah so well you know we'll find out and as soon as we find out that they're going to extend it beyond 2019 you know we're going to find out right here and let everybody know on of course, of course. Yes. Of course. How, how could we not <laughs> yes all right let's go ahead and move on over to Jacksonville the Gamecocks are taking on Mississippi Valley State in their home opener and JSU they're off to a hot start Jalen Green not seeing what he likes so he turns the other way he runs it in for the score on their first drive of the game two-point conversion is good they go up eight to zero Later on in the first, same score, Cooper launches it to Josh Pearson, nicely placed. He comes down with the catch and hauls it in for a 38-yard touchdown run. Gamecocks on top, 15-0. And from then on, it was no turning back. Cooper would once again find Pearson, this time for the 75-yard. And he's going to score. Look at that pass, you guys. That was, like, perfect. That's awesome. <laughs> Gamecocks shut out the Devils, and they go 71-0. You know, we corrected a lot of things. Uh, I think just penalties, we cut those down by a third, by two thirds, and had five nights there, 14, and really didn't have many. And really, probably one unsmart football play with the celebration deal. But other than that, I was I was well pleased in a lot of a lot of areas. JSU has a bye week next week. Then they'll face off against Tennessee Tech. There's more sports extra coming up after the break. When we return, we'll dive into SEC action with both Alabama and Auburn. Their games were both at home. We've got that and much more coming up next. And now back to the action on WZDX Sports Extra. Welcome back. What better, a better way to start off your home opener than pretty much with a guaranteed win, right, Charity? Yeah, that's right. Well, that was the, actually the case for a lot of teams this weekend, including the number one ranked Crimson Tide as they took on Arkansas State. Off to the capstone. Yes, Nick Saban and the Tide coming out hot. We're going to start things off in the first quarter. Tua tonga Bailoa under center after being named the starter this week. First drive of the game. He passes it to Jerry Judy. He says, get off of me. He makes his way 58 yards down the field to the end zone, putting the Tide up to an early 7-0 lead. And Bama with the ball once again after Arkansas State's punter drops it. It's Tua with the read to Henry Ruggs. And Ruggs, just like Judy says, get off of him and he's <laughs> going to find the end zone for a score. Extra point was no good, though, so 13-0 Alabama on top. Moving to the second quarter now, Jalen Hurts being inserted into the offense. He is will fake the handoff and call his own number, but unfortunately he gets upended Ooh. and then fumbles the ball right there. He's rocked by Darion Jackson. The Red Wolves take over the possession. But of course, the tight defense stopped the Red Wolves, so Bam back on offense again, and it's just more of the same. Hurts under center. He throws a nice pass to Irv Smith Jr. in the end zone. The tide just continued to roll. Bama didn't get the shutout, though, but still good showing. Final score, 57-7. A 50-point victory, which also means that they covered the spread. Now we'll head over to Kayla Carlisle, who spent her day in Tuscaloosa yesterday. Yeah, Kayla, what do you make of the Tide's performance yesterday? Oh my gosh, you guys, it was a great day yesterday for the Tide. <laughs> but it was the first game of the season at home for the Tide, and Saban had no plans of taking it easy on their opponent. He continued to show his team's depth after nearly blowing out Arkansas State. 
The Tide kicked things off right away with the Red Wolves showing no mercy on the field. It was touchdown after touchdown after touchdown, and Arkansas State struggled to keep the ball in their hands. Sophomore wide receiver Jerry Judy showed once again how much talent he brings to the table for the Crimson Tide. He and quarterback Tua Tunga Vailoa might have something special for the fans. They're two for two on opening drive touchdowns already this season. Uh, yeah, I feel like um, I'm doing pretty good. Um, Coach Locke calling good plays. Um, O-line good, doing a good job executing. Quarterback doing a good job executing. The Tide totaled six touchdowns in yesterday's showdown, four from starter Tunga Vailoa and two from Jalen Hurts. Tunga Vailoa finished the game with 228 yards passing and four scoring passes, both career highs for the sophomore QB. And we made some big plays in the passing game. We we're pretty efficient uh, in terms of what we did. I think we're a little inconsistent at times in a running game. Uh, I think we need to didn't really finish blocks up front like we'd like to all the time. Um, so that's something that we definitely need to improve on so we can continue to have the balance when we play against you know, probably better front guys than what we've seen the last two weeks. Alabama has now won 17 straight games when scoring a touchdown on its first offensive possession of a game. The last time they lost with those odds was in 2014 against Oklahoma in the All-State Sugar Bowl. So clearly the Red Wolves just didn't have enough in them to compete with the Tide yesterday. Hopefully next week will be better for them as they go on the road against Tulsa. Meanwhile, Alabama will go to Ole Miss. All right, let's stay in the SEC. Down on the plane, seventh rank Auburn taking on Alabama State yesterday in their home opener. The Tigers back in action after that big win over Washington in the Chick fil A kickoff classic. First half now, Jared Stenham hands the ball off to Booby Whitlow, and there's a big hit and there's a fumble, and Alabama State comes up with the ball. However, they can't catch in and get no points. A few minutes later, Jared Stenham now running the read option, fakes out everybody. And eventually he finds the end zone for a score. Tigers take a 7-0 lead. Skip ahead towards the end of the first quarter. Stenham with time drops back and throws a beautiful pass. And Anthony Swartz is on the receiving end of a 57-yard touchdown. 14-0 Tigers on top. Alabama State, though, looking to get this one, get on the board at least. DJ Pearson looks to his right, but he is intercepted by Daniel Thomas on a 29-yard pick six, 21 to nothing. If we were playing video games, you'd have to get off the stick right now because of the three-touchdown rule. And it basically was all Auburn the rest of the way. Second quarter, Cam Martin takes the handoff and finds the end zone for four yards out, 28 to nothing. And when the going is good, the Hornets now looking for the punt, but is blocked by Devin Barrett, and he. Dives into the end zone for the touchdown, 35 to nothing, 42 to two at the break. Tigers go on to win this non-conference battle by a final of 63 to nine. We were able to run the football, and we said that last week. You know, uh, we got to run the football better. So, um, you know, I thought that was good to, to get back on track, run the football, and you know, especially given all the running backs uh, carries. There's nothing like carries in a game, and you can find out a lot about the running backs too. And kind of like we talked about, we got to do a better job of protecting the football. That's really the the only negative you know I saw from the game. Now, ladies, of course, I saw a lot of big name teams stepping out of conference uh, to play money games for the other teams, if you want to say. <laughs> right. um, but I feel that it's, it was a good feel for both Alabama and Auburn to like get the guys, the younger guys, some experience as they get ready to go in the SEC play. Auburn's got LSU next week. Ole Miss will host Alabama. It's going to be a tough game for both of those teams. Absolutely. And Auburn, I think in their game last week, they had a, a field full of freshmen playing by the second half. They did an awesome job, too. Yeah. I, I remember talking about that for the college preview. Sorry, that was like a awkward <laughs> pause there for us. But, uh, <laughs> but for our college preview, I remember talking about the four uh, receiving uh, freshmen uh -huh. going into the game. And I, I think that they did a really well or good job uh, playing in that game yeah. last week. And I know one thing, how Gus Malzahn even mentioned, one thing they were trying to focus on is running the ball. And I think they did a pretty good job yeah, of running it. 429 that's, yards. That's, and like I mean, it's pretty okay. good. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's not bad. They're definitely going to have to find a way to move the ball against Coach uh, Coach O and the LSU Tigers next oh, week. Yeah, well. That's going to be a big one. That's going to be a huge battle. Absolutely. And of course, you know, we'll be down there to check out all the oh, action. We can't wait. Yeah. All right. Speaking of action, the Tennessee Titans went 0-4 in the preseason, but 
that was a concern for Mike Bravo and company. Of course, they kicked off their regular season today after a nice rain delay. We'll pick things up in the third. Titans down 10 to 3 until Deion Lewis spins his way into the end zone for a score. He ties the ball game up at 10. Now Lewis led the team with 76 rushing yards. But I hate to say these dreaded words, young ladies. Oh. Ensuing kickoff, Jaheim oh. Grant takes it all the way back, Hi. 102 yards for a score. That puts the Miami oh. Dolphins up 17 to 10. Now the Titans were dealt another major blow in the third quarter. Marcus Mariota leaving the game with it with an apparent wrist injury. So we continue things. Miami up 17 to 10. Ryan Tannehill stepping back to pass. He wants to go deep and long and he finds Kenny Steals and Steals won't be denied the end zone on this 75 yard scoring play. 24 to 10 Dolphins. Once again, these two words ensuing kickoff Ooh. are very, very big. This time for the Titans, Darius Jennings hauls it in for a 94 yard touchdown. 24 to 17 at that point. However, the Titans couldn't draw any closer in this one. Check out your final score as the Dolphins beat the Titans by final of 27 to 20. After the game, Mike Gravel said that they have to be more consistent. Well, I thought that there was some, you know, on all levels, I thought that there was uh, some glimpses of what we'd like to be. But again, the consistency is nowhere close to, to being where we need to be to, to compete, um, which is unfortunate. We only get so many of these opportunities. Uh, I got to do a better job to make sure that uh, we're prepared. And still to come, the Rocket City Trash Pandas is the official name for the minor league baseball team that's heading to Madison. When we return, we'll give you our take on it, as well as, of course, our best of the league. Stay with us. And now back to the action on WZDX Sports Extra. Welcome back to WZDX Sports Extra. It's now time for the Freaky Fast Picks, which are brought to you by Jimmy John. And Matt Kreitzer is in the building with us once again. Of course, I know you enjoyed that first weekend of college football. I heard you got a chance to do a little tailgating. So I got to know, what does Jimmy John's offer when it comes to tailgating and maybe some catering? So, Mo, this is actually one of our newest products. It's our 12 and 24 packs of mini jimmies. Okay. And they're perfect for tailgating. They're four inch sandwiches. You can do a variety. Each sandwich is individually bagged. And, you know, people can pre order these as many as they need for their tailgating needs, but we can also feed 50 people on an hour's notice. That's not bad at all. I mean, so you're telling me basically if I brought my family in, we'd be, able to be hooked up with this, right? Absolutely. Lickety split. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> All right, so let's jump into our freaky fast picks. I've got three games involving top 25 teams for you. Want to see how well you're doing with these picks. So let's okay. jump at it. The number one team in the land, Alabama, going to Ole Miss. It's been really tough for Alabama to win out there in Oxford. Give me your thoughts on these picks. So they're ranked number one preseason, and uh, I think it's going to be, uh, you know, Ole Miss is always, is, always gives them a, a fight. Uh, and it's always respectable. So I think that uh, Alabama's going to win still. Uh, I think that's, uh, I, I think that's uh, almost a guarantee. But uh, uh, I, th I think that uh, Ole Miss will keep it respectable. It'll be within two touchdowns. Okay. Uh, let's get an even tougher battle. The Auburn Tigers taking on the LSU Tigers in the Battle of the Tigers. They played some really wild games. LSU had that big win over Miami in week one. Auburn had a big win over Washington in week one. Sure. But it's down on the plains at Jaron Hare. What do you think? Uh, just as you said, it is that. And they are uh, they were preseason ranked number seven. And, and I think Auburn is, is definitely going to take the win. Um, it's always a tough matchup. But yeah, I think that the, it'll be within a touchdown, maybe 10 points. So you're going with? I'm going with Auburn. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, I have to go with Auburn. All right. And finally, another top 25 matchup. Ohio State, who still doesn't have Urban Meyer on the sidelines yet, going down to Texas to take on the TCU Horn Frogs. Yeah. I, I'm, I've always been a Big Ten guy, uh, you know, grew up in uh, fighting Illini land. So, uh, you know, the why I love Alabama and Auburn, uh, I'm going to have to go with the Buckeyes on this. They're, they're ranked number four. They got a great team. And uh, yeah, I think they're going to beat them by a few touchdowns. All right. So recapping, we've got Alabama over Ole Miss. We've yeah. got Auburn over LSU and right. Ohio State over TCU. Exactly. All right, we'll let you know how you do in the upcoming weeks with uh, your freaky fast picks. Once again, it's Matt Kreitzer here at Jimmy John with the freaky fast picks. That'll do it for that segment. Stay with us. We'll be right back here on WZDX Sports Extra. And now back to the action on WZDX Sports Extra. Well, we've been talking baseball nicknames for months now for the Madison baseball team. And this week, 
The Trash Pandas became the name fans will have to get used to this season. The Trash Pandas received an overwhelming 41% of the vote from fans in the first round and 45% of the vote in the final round. So who came up with the name? Well, we can all thank Matt Higley. He won season tickets for the next four years for choosing that winning name. I'm not thanking him. So guys, yeah, and I already know <laughs> no. Charity's, Charity's answer on this, and I, I'm afraid to ask or let the people know, but like, what do you think about this I know, name? I know, I will fully support, I'm super excited, baseball coming back, but I can't say the name, honestly. <laughs> I love the name. You have to embrace it. Like, Trash Panels was my second favorite behind Thunder Sharks. Thunder who, Sharks, yes! No, which Thunder was Sharks. the actual runner-up. No, that was my least favorite, I think. Exactly. But like 45% of the people voted for Trash Panda. Like, <laughs> because they know what's up. No, exactly. like, y'all are what's wrong with Trash that. Panda. No, oh, like, I, I can't. Well, look, just to let everybody know, here's a disclaimer. This will not be the official <laughs> logo we just happened to are put in. Are you sure? In. I'm positive. <laughs> um, we actually put in a Google search for Trash Pandas, and that's what we got. So... <laughs> Hey, it looks good to me. Exactly. Let's roll with best of the week, everybody. <laughs> Charity, yeah, you yeah, so first. On, on some better news, my team, well, my team actually lost, but I will say I'm very proud of their performance against number two, Clemson. You guys know I was ragging on Selma the whole time, but now that Jimbo Fisher is at a and I see a whole completely different team, and they really did a great job there in College Station. Couldn't pull, pull off the win, but they came within two points at the last second, and it's just a really completely different team, a whole new fight under them, so I'm just really proud of my Aggies. I had to give them a shout out. And my brother, his birthday was yesterday. He was at the game. Aww. So happy birthday to my brother. Oh, that's so <laughs> sweet. Happy birthday to him. Absolutely. All right, guys. Well, my best of the week, I'll give you a hint first. Let's see if you can guess it. It has to do with surfing and a man's best friend. If you guessed dog surfing, then you guessed right. Several dogs out in California got to Hangton at Del Mar Beach for the 13th annual Dog Surfathon. More than 70 dogs surfed their way back to land, showing off nice. their best tricks on the water, <laughs> right? right? <laughs> and if the cuteness of the dogs on surfboards wasn't enough for you, 100% of the proceeds from this event went to the Helen Woodward Animal Center for to help orphan pets. How cute is Aww. that? Yeah, it's not bad at all. They're I'd... better than I'd be on a surfboard. Same. Same. <laughs> all right, get ready, ladies, because I'm about to tell you about the legend of Kaylee Foster. Not only is she the Ocean Springs High School homecoming queen, she also is their field goal kicker. And last week, she kicked the game-winning extra point to clinch a 13-12 win oh. over George nice. County. She scored majority of the points of the night. She actually had two field goals and that game-winning extra point. So congratulations to Kaylee Foster on not only being the queen off the field, but the queen on the field, and also <laughs> she kicked that. the game winner. So, a double threat there. Absolutely, oh, yeah. <laughs> man. You know, college coaches, be on the lookout. There's yeah. a young lady who's got a nice boot out there in Ocean Springs, Mississippi. Yeah, yeah. Miss America and Miss USA. Look out for her. She's a captain. You know? There oh you my go. Gosh. You know? Yeah, she can do it all. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right, everyone, we've come to another end of a wonderful episode of WZDX Sports Extra for Kayla Carlisle and Charity Chambers. I'm Mo Carter. Y'all want to do it one more time, everybody? Let's, Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, Let's throw one, it up. two, three, X. X. All right, we'll see you guys <laughs> next week, okay? Thanks for watching WZDX Sports Extra. Furniture provided by Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries. Live life comfortably.